So hey guys, it's well, it's been a little while since I've turned the camera. I know some people have been asking, what happened? Did you fall off the face of the earth? No, I'm still hanging out. Um, just been a little bit of a busy time. Deer hunting season kicked off, or rifle season more so here in Minnesota. Uh, it's like a two week season um, or three weekends, or depending on where you are in the state, um, one week or two, you know, from one weekend all the way through the other weekend. So let's see, seven, eight, nine, nine days of hunting, depending on where you are in the state. Um, deer hunting, um, statistically when I look at the stats, it's like less than 50% of people that buy a license actually even get a deer and most of that all happens opening season. That seems to never be the case for me. I've, I don't think I've ever harvested a deer opening season and I always have to go out and work for it. So that's what I've been doing. Um, just been putting my time in, hour before the sun rises till an hour after the sun sets. Uh, been pretty chilly here lately. I think the other morning I got up four degrees out. Uh, it's been kind of sitting around at 10, 16, 20 degrees. I think we had like one or two days where the temperatures came up just enough for the snow to melt and then things plummeted back down. Um, but been a little chilly here. Definitely um, kind of nice because it does help the deer move, especially a lot more during the day and everything. But uh, I probably know I'm not wearing my glasses. That's a big part of the reason for that. Um, when I'm doing a lot of like stand hunting, not going out and doing stocking and stuff, uh, you just sit in there. It's very hard to stay warm. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll wear like a full mask. And if you have glasses on, I just, they always seem to want to fog up. Plus it's nice because you're not, if you're like setting up in an area, depending on the wind direction and the sun is beating towards you, you know, this, the risk of, you know, glare coming off your glasses. So it's kind of nice to be able to put contacts in. So I'll switch back to my glasses here pretty soon. But um, that's kind of where I'm wearing contacts. Um, let's see. Been uh, a pretty decent hunting week, I guess. Uh, deer been moving. I, there were some, a couple, I think there's three does that stepped out one night. I was waiting around for a buck to follow out. Never did. And passing on the does. There was one buck that I swear, every year there's always some buck that um, just just messes with me. And the opportunity never arises. Or I get a glimpse at him, but the the, uh, the the shot is not a very clean shot, so it just doesn't happen. But uh, this year, a nice, a decent sized doe stepped out, and I decided that was going to be the one for this year. So I harvested that. Feel very, very fortunate and lucky. Um, got most of that all put away in the freezer here. Uh, I think the only thing we have left to do is um, get um, our our ground uh, dealt with. So a lot of times, some of the neck meat and stuff like that. The nice part is, I don't think I've shared this either. We just recently process our pigs. And with pigs, we always set aside a bunch of our fat. Uh, one to render down for lard, and the other is to cut with some venison. If you're not very familiar with venison or deer meat, uh, very, very lean meat. And the wax, uh, the, the uh, fat that is on a deer is very, very waxy. And a lot of times that's where a lot of the wild game flavor comes from. So I always try to get that stuff removed before it ends up in the freezer. And then when you're dealing with like ground um, stuff, a lot of times you're cutting a beef or a pork fat. So we're very fortunate with raising pigs and then being able to uh, use some of that fat to grind with the venison meat here. So we did process our pigs. That's something I've really wanted to share with you guys and more on how we do. Cause we do all the stuff ourselves. Besides taking our bacon in, uh, we go get that cured. Uh, by someone else but that's something i'd like to, to explore down the road uh, especially because what we do is uh we, you know there's two sides the bacon comes off the belly of the pig and i'd like to try to cure one half one year and then take uh, the other into the shop so that way if something goes bad we we're not at a complete loss i guess for for bacon for that year so um Something I've really wanted to share, I guess, I think there's, I think we have some stuff, some value to share, but the, the, the two big struggles that I run up against, and I know I've shared a little bit of it in the past on how we do some of this stuff is, 
there's two things. One is, is we raise pigs with our neighbors. And then we go and, and do all this stuff. And I don't want to be the guy that's slowing everybody down when it comes time to get things going and say, hey, let me get a shot of this. And then the other thing is, is a lot of times you do a video on a, that type of subject, you tend to bring people out of the woodwork that might not agree with your views on eating meat, even though in the grand scheme of humans, uh, there's a very, very small window of, of the idea of not eating meat, and now suddenly you are the bad guy. So a lot of times the, 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 um, the negativity comes out, and I don't want to be like, hey, can I film you in this process? And then that that negativity gets directed towards them or they feel like they're being attacked. So um, I just don't want them to, to be in the, the crosshairs in that process. So um, that's always been my big struggle. But to give you a, just a rough idea, you know, there's one day we go out and we actually harvest them, take care of the, the gunning. And then what we do is we go through a, a skinning process, very similar like skinning a deer. Uh, the only difference is it doesn't really come off quite as easy. It's more like what they say, like skin in a bear. And I can really recommend using a very sharp knife, uh, like a Havilon knife or something like that, like a sur surgical type blade really makes a night and day difference um, getting that process done. And then our second part, second day, we, we all meet up together as families and then we start figuring out how um, we want the stuff to end up in the freezer. So, you know, like you got your hams, for example, you can, you know, obviously have a whole ham, you can do like ham steaks, you could do roast, you could get it all ground up and just do ground um, pork. That's really phenomenal, burgers and stuff. Um, and just figure out how you want to get the stuff in the freezer. And each family has their own ways that they want to get the stuff done. And I'd like to be able to share some of that stuff um, at some point with you guys. I uh, just haven't really figured how I'm going to get over some of that. So, um... Let's see what else has been going on. Normally I've been making videos like every year when deer season's going on, but there's just been a lot of other little small miscellaneous things going on in the background. Had to come in and replace our iron filter in our house. Um, that kind of filters our water in our whole entire house. And most of the plumbing projects I've done have always been either copper pipe or galvanized pipe, depending on the homes we've been in. This house has got a lot of PEX piping in it. I'm very, very comfortable doing galvanized and sweating copper pipes. And uh, I figured, you know, I could probably have done this project actually cheaper doing it, doing copper because it was such a short little run and everything. But I thought I would bite the bullet, break down, and then go out and buy um, a tool to be able to like crimp the, the PEX piping. If you're not familiar with PEX piping, uh, obviously the cost of copper has massively gone up over the years here. And a lot of the plumbing projects are now done with like this plastic piping. And then you have these little crimp uh, metal rings that go on on the ends that connect all the different pipes together. And and that's sort of that, that process. So that went pretty well. It was my first time doing it. It was a little bit of a learning curve. I was very pleased with actually how easy it was. I did get a little frustrated right at the very end. I had one that did not seal up very well. I kicked the water on. I suddenly noticed it was leaking. Killed it really quick. Cleaned up all the water and then had to go back in. There was a ring that was in a pretty tight area and I probably just didn't hit it very well. But um, once I got that all squared away, everything went pretty smooth after that. So um, I don't, th I didn't film any of that stuff, but that was um, a little bit of a learning curve, but a, a pretty fun little project. So anyways, yeah, I'm still, still kicking. I hope everyone's doing really well. I just thought I'd turn the camera tonight, say hi, and uh, just do a little catch up. So hope everyone's doing well. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.